It was a very, a very uh, deep wish from the war children to learn to know their family, their origin, where they come from, how the family were, how they lived, how they died. A generation of children born to strengthen the Aryan race, once deemed valuable above all others by the German authorities, then cast out by their communities and separated from their families. This is the story of the Lebensbjorn children and one woman's discovery of her true biological descent. One Friday afternoon, we sit out together. Then came this telephone and a woman called and she was just crying and I could feel the hair raising in my neck. Our youngest son, and uh, he said, uh, who she talking with? She had some funny voice. And uh, Shell said, oh, it's the, her mother. Oh, she's dead. Years ago. Elna Jonsson grew up in the Norwegian city of Bergen. She was 40 years old when she received a phone call that would change her life as she knew it. A woman, claiming to be her mother, revealed she was one of the 10 to 12,000 children born to Norwegian women and German soldiers during the country's occupation in World War II. Shortly after her birth, Elna was adopted and raised by Norwegian parents as her mother was unable to raise her as a single woman. But I remember, I grew up in a nice family, nice parents. I was the only child. I love to read. I love to, to um, yeah. I love to go to school. You yeah, very happy childhood. Very quiet. Very happy. Yeah. Also, it was a shock uh, to learn to know that your mother uh, was not your mother, and your father, what you thought was not your father, your grandfather was not your father, your uncle, your aunts, and all. That was a shock. Not knowing her true biological heritage likely saved Elna from a childhood of trauma. The children born during the reign of the SS-initiated Lebensbjorn organisation were highly valued by the German authorities for their Aryan physiological traits. As such, during the war, they were looked after in various German-owned kinderheims or children's homes. It was surprisingly after the war that these so-called children of the enemy were outcast by their communities and subject to many forms of abuse. Ingvar Nadreva, the director of the Regiment State Archives, explains what happened to the children post-war. Uh, so um, these kids were regarded as a problem or as a national insult. Those of them that grew up in Norway, they were not treated uh, very nicely. Quite a high number of these kids have uh, been treated very bad, and a lot of them started to use alcohol. And quite a few ended up as, as uh, drug addicts, and quite a few of them are, are not alive anymore. One girl, she had to stand upright during the geography lessons when they talk about Germany. And you know, at that time it was a shame to be a, a, of German origin. Their mother had experienced a shame uh, and, and couldn't really stand up for their, for their child. So it is, and their children, their child, their German child, reminded them again and again of the shame. Mm. Many of the Lebensbjorn children were subject to sexual and psychological abuse when the German authorities were no longer there to protect them. Those not lucky enough to be sent to family or adopted like Elna were left in the care of the Norwegian state. Some young children found themselves in institutions growing up amongst mentally ill adults. Others were tested on with harmful drugs and some were marched down the streets to face locals hurling abuse at them. Elna does not consider herself a Lebensbjorn child as she was not registered under the initiative at birth. She does, however, identify as a war child and has had a lucky escape from what the Lebensbjorn children endured. Only this year has Prime Minister Anna Solberg issued an apology for the misery they endured then and those still alive feel today. Sadly, many died long before this admittance. And that's why uh, Anna Solberg gave her apology for about 14 days ago. They really are hurt. I don't think any excuse can help them, really. I don't think so. No. But I also think it's good that there is a, a been given an excuse and that it is accepted that it wasn't right to treat them like that. The war children still alive think only one good thing can come of this. Learning from the neglect they suffered and ensuring the same thing doesn't happen to children across the world today. It's the only reason I can think there's come something good out of this is that 
one can learn to, to protect them as the, the children of the enemy in their own environment. Looking through a book of dark images of children in kinderheims and Norwegian mothers soon to be ostracised from the communities in their home country serves as a stark reminder that the issue of children affected by war, whether in direct conflict zones or as a ripple effect of social condemnation, is one that is continually repeating itself throughout history. James Denslow, Head of Conflict and Humanitarian Policy and Advocacy for Save the Children, explains that children themselves often face the biggest loss of all in war the loss of their childhood. I mean, from my perspective, one of the most powerful elements of what you're, what you're seeing, what we're seeing around these large numbers of children affected by conflict is not just the, the physical and the, and the mental uh, kind of scars that they carry forward, but it's the very loss of childhood itself. And there's a myriad of challenges that children face in conflict, and unfortunately, they do carry them on to, to when they become adults. Our founder, um, 100 years ago, Egelton Jeb, was a was a very charismatic woman and she said that all wars are waged against children and I think that's a, a very powerful line that we should we should all remember is that you know sometimes we we look at a conflict and we see the sides that are fighting it and sometimes people say they want no one to win but ultimately it's children who pay the biggest price regardless of the, the various different combatants. And as for Elna, how did finding her biological family change her life? When we learn to know each other, me and my uh, biological family. It was a, a great enrichment and the, 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 our life was very, very changed but do better.